Hey, what's up everyone? This is Krembo from Emotional Crypto Trading and today we're going to run some price analysis and market analysis for Bitcoin compared to US dollar for Coinbase exchange, right? So let's talk about Bitcoin and see if we could break out of the next resistance zone that we're having right just in front of us. And it's important to consider a couple of news and details of the marketplace as well as notes that we should have in mind when trading right now Bitcoin at this important stages nearly $18,000 per Bitcoin right now. It's sitting around $17,600 as of right now, checking the prices right here on Coinbase. So that's where we are. That's what we have to consider. And these are the charts which are set for two hours candlesticks. Now, before we get started on it, I like to talk about the uh, Quinn Market Caps website, which is a volume of um, 16 billion, nearly 16 billion for Bitcoin in the last 24 hours out of 38, which is close to 50% of the entire market volume is in Bitcoin as of right now. On the other side, something that I've seen over the last days changing quite heavily is the BTC dominance, which was way higher than it is right now. So I'm going to open that in a new tab and explain it to you. You remember that Bitcoin had that, you know, kind of uh, strong run up right we did have this let me just get back to the chart this strong run up while the altcoins were suffering which is something obvious because the pair between the bitcoin and altcoin was of course in the btc's favor now in the same time people were cashing out from altcoins and throwing money into Bitcoin. Now, this is what happens usually in Bitcoin is going parabolically and not the entire space is increasing. We're talking about this specific time where you can see this parabolic movements. Now, after that, we could have seen the altcoins market taking advantage of the nice um, environment of the entire crypto space and they started a nice increase in their prices. Some of them just went like 200% in 48 hours like just i made a video presentation around ripple and they uh, made you know an explosion like that so that's not a case scenario we did have some other examples but at that time bitcoin was suffering right so the btc dominance decreased because at first we were having a nice high btc dominance let's just take a look at this this is the btc dominance we're going to zoom in a little bit to see the last phase right so once we had that run up during this period of time, BTC dominance was going up and we were approaching 65%. Now, if you look back, you can't really see 65% over here. Just kind of look at a longer period of time. No 65%. We do have here like 57, but no 65. And of course, we were at 66 around April. So since April 2017, of course, we were sitting below 65% BTC dominance. Therefore, the altcoins market was gaining momentum after April. We do remember that high parabolic movements of majority of the altcoins at that time. We do remember there were increases in uh, their prices of even 10 times for some of the altcoins. Now, since that, we were just uh, moving around 40, 45, 50% in the last weeks, but usually we were uh, around 40 to 45% for a couple of months for the BTC dominance. That means the market was kind of slipping at that time, especially uh, the bulls were waiting for the signals to get started on uh, purchasing into Bitcoin and raising it above $10,000 level, right? So that made a huge, huge difference, the $10,000 level of Bitcoin, because news started to push it more and more, television and everyone started to advertise it like crazy. Uh, and that's usually what happens when we're approaching uh, this kind of $20,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, and imagine what's gonna happen when we are going to have a Bitcoin worth at $100,000. Imagine what's gonna be the amount of popularity around that time, huge. So getting back to this, you see that parabolic movement, we went up exactly like the charts, then we were coming down the way because the altcoins market uh, was 
the one dominating the space at that time. So Bitcoin was kind of losing in the price, but not that much as we were expecting, not that much. Bitcoin has the ability and still has it to find great prices for bulls at around 17, 14, 15 thousand dollars. As you can see at this ranges, we were able to support us quite heavily and there's no bearish movement that should be considered meaningful at this time, at this time, right? So let's talk about the major support zone that we did have around 13,500 bucks. We have this major support zone sitting right over here, which needs to be considered the next major support zone. Uh, now we do have a support line at 15,700, which gives a confirmation over here. And that's right the big candlestick that has that long, long stick uh, down the way, which is rejection in the prices of the market. So bulls were really finding that price growth. They were not considering the market should decrease. They were not considering that the price should follow a downtrend from there, which could have been established at that time. But we did have that uh, nice trend breakout if we wanted to do it like this. This nice trend breakout over here, which also comes uh, with the confirmation of this rejection in the price. So bulls were not really seeing a uh, market that presented a bearish environment at that time at all. That's why you see these two confirmations of why Bitcoin increased in price over the next hours and so after this breakout happened, right? So during this period, we did have that nice little, little, little uptrend. So that means how do you see right now Bitcoin and are we actually having the ability to break out of this $18,000 resistance zone, which is kind of tested right now? If we do break out of that, $22,000, $24,000 is the next resistance point that applies as heavy one, right? The next major resistance between twenty-two dollars and $24,000, we're going to have a nice movement exactly like we could have and we did have actually at this time, right? So at this time, after this retreat, which could be considered this one, just as a larger, larger level, a larger volume could be uh, kind of a copy paste as long as we are able to break out of the $18,000 resistance line. Uh, there's not going to be any sort of problem pushing towards 2021, 20, 22,000. Imagine if we're approaching 20,000 for a movement of 10%, we would need to accumulate $2,000, right? So it's not like at the beginnings, we definitely have to uh, care about the percentage more than the amount of money. Because sometimes nowadays people use that, oh, Bitcoin increased 1,500 bucks in the last 24 hours. Now, if Bitcoin is 30 grand, 1,500 is just like 5%, which is not a big deal. Considering that, oh, it's like 1,500 bucks, which is quite big as an increase in, in, in the value of the money, right? Comparing to the entire space, you don't really see increases of $1,500 uh, in 24 hours for any other cryptocurrency which is kind of an example that people use to manipulate the others. What I like to do is talk about percentages because that's what makes sense. Who cares about the amount of money increased as long as the percentage is not something that satisfies you, right? So that's something that we should really uh, play around, the percentages. Even though the market is going higher and higher over the next few months and years, people will talk about the amount. It increased five grand. Imagine at $50,000, 10% is $5,000. They'll say Bitcoin increased $5,000 in the last 24 hours, which is just 10%. It's not that uh, all about the increase of the money. It's all about the percentage. And I'm sure that makes sense for you, but they were trying to manipulate you by telling you the amount of money it increased, right? So that's something different you want to be uh, aware of that and keep yourself protected. Now the resistance we see just as of right now making this video is not a big deal at all. As long as this, there's not big volume right now in the market. And we did have these two confirmations here where the bulls uh, really, really thought that the price and the market still uh, has the ability to give us another run up as of right now. So it's, at least we do have that fight with $18,000. Uh, we didn't have this, you know, kind of support line in 15,700. 
And then the major support zone at 13,500, of course, we'll have to uh, see if a downtrend is going to be established to approach that price or not. But for now, we are crazy. We are kind of bullish in the Bitcoin's price. And uh, that's kind of clear. On the other side, another uh, bullish signs are the uh, Bitcoin consolidating near or 80 or um, what do you call all time high after a huge run, which is a healthy sign. Chances are high that the bulls will attempt to break out. Right. So we did have this consolidation. This was a consolidation after our uh, quick run up. Uh, and this consolidation is pretty close to our and it's very near to our all time high. Right. So that means that the bulls were not really allowing the market to have that traditional 40 to 80 percent pullback. That didn't happen. 40 to 80 percent pullback after the run up didn't happen. We didn't have that reversed uh, V letter pattern, which would have looked like this. Right. We didn't have that. Now, because of that, uh, we were able to consolidate around the all time high. Bulls were pushing more and more and it's uh, getting more and more uh, popular around this topic, especially that Bitcoin was able to sustain its price at this high level after that fast, fast run up after the increase of a couple of hundreds of billions of dollars in the space of the cryptocurrency in a such a such a quick period of time. This is becoming more and more popular and it's encouraging people to buy in continuously. Right. So on the other side, failing to sustain our current environment could encourage the beers who can push the prices down to our next major support zone. Right. So if we fail to sustain our current environment and we also have to consider our uptrend, our uptrend line is starting from here and it just goes like that just like the way you see it. Now that uptrend line needs to give us support at some point. If it's going to be approached, it needs to give us the support, right? So that's one sign of uh, the environment that needs to be kept up, it needs to be confirmed for an eventual breakout of the $18,000 resistance zone. If not, if the bears are taking over, if we have a breakout down the way, in the support line that we do have as a trending support line like this, if we do have a breakout somewhere over here, then of course bears could take advantage of that and push the prices down the way to the 13,500 bucks uh, level possibility, right? Because that's where we have major stuff going on. So that's kind of the way we see it as of right now. And that's pretty much what could I say about the price and market analysis of Bitcoin. Now, on the other side, I just wanted to share with you a couple of news and details which just happened in the last hours and days around BTC and some ideas of the entire market. Right. So now even political hands are warning that the current banking system may be on its way out. We're talking about the Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu claimed that the operation of traditional banks will eventually become obsolete and could be replaced by Bitcoin. Now, this is a huge, huge announcement by, by, by the Prime Minister, which encouraged people to push forward by, by purchasing Bitcoin, right? So this is kind of big. Not many people used to do this, especially at the level this person has, right? So a Prime Minister is uh, having an important role, especially in this society, and it's uh, quite uh, representing a large influence when they're talking about this cryptocurrency side, which is not really enjoyed by the banks. Of course, it's not really enjoyed by the banks. Now, who wanted to make the, the migration into Bitcoin out of the fiat? And so they did made it uh, a couple of years ago. And I'm uh, I shouldn't say I'm aware, but I would definitely say that I am considering uh, the banks who wanted to invest in Bitcoin. They did bought in when it, the price was below 100 or so. They did bought in at the right time and they know what could happen. Uh, they're in the situation of knowing that their system is obsolete. It's running out and all those things. So they know they have to shift themselves up with Bitcoin and so on, participate in the blockchain and all the things. Right. So uh, we shouldn't cry for the banks at all because they are always and always one step forward in the financial system. 
Now, um, another thing that I wanted to consider here, again, around the banks, is the central banks of UAE and Saudi Arabia are reportedly launching a pilot initiative that will see that two institutions test a new cryptocurrency for cross-border payments, right? So even on that side of the world, things are speeding up in the banking, between the banking systems. And it clearly mentions two institutions test a new cryptocurrency for cross-border payments. So they're testing something new. We don't know its name and it's not Bitcoin. After it's not Ethereum, it's not Ripple, Stratus, uh, nor of them. Have to see exactly which one is one of those, because probably an investment into uh, such a cryptocurrency, if it's available, could be pretty profitable for the long term. Especially, I'm um, you know advising people to look around the Asian cryptos because that's where the market is going to go over 2018, 19, 20, 25, and so on, and so on. Asia is kind of. Uh, winning against the petrol dollar right so that's kind of all about today's video presentation guys if uh you found it useful feel free to like share subscribe on my youtube channel i'm going to share with you more updates around the space as much as possible as quickly as possible on the other side if you would like to become uh my one-on-one -on -one student feel free to check the first link in the description area where you will be able to see a video presentation around my royal coaching program where I could teach you on how to become a professional trader, right? So that's kind of all about today's. BTC struggling a little bit right now, struggling, but that's not powerful sell-off. We should not be scared as long as there's no big volume going down the way. Little candlesticks. These are little baby candlesticks to, you know, in comparison to what we had before. These are the ones that should freak you out. You know, there's long, long candlesticks at that time. Currently, there's nothing like that. The environment is, is pretty calm right now because people saw that the uh, consolidation was very, very near to our all-time high, and we didn't have that pullback of 40 to 80% that you, sh you know, traditionally we used to have when we did have run-ups like this, right? So that's kind of all about today. Talk to you soon, guys.